Hi guys, good morning. This is Vidur. And this video is very critical for anybody who wants to deploy a missed access point or an EX switch or an SRX onto the missed dashboard, right? Uh, so one of the one of the most important questions that we have before we onboard a missed AP or an EX switch or an SRX is which ports to allow on the firewall uh, before we connect an AP onto the network or connect a switch onto the network. So anybody like an SE or a partner or, or even a customer who's setting its site to go live uh, should should actually allow these ports which I'm going to discuss in the video uh, before uh, you know before we before we let the APs talk to the talk to the cloud. So what the APs will do is the APs will basically when they come up get an IP address from DSCP and they will go hit the cloud and, and, and get registered onto the MIS dashboard. So for them to get to the cloud there are certain ports that we have to allow. So we'll talk more about that on this in this particular video. And now we are in the dashboard where we always are. This is the live demo site that we have. And I wanna take your attention to the question mark here at the top right. I'm gonna zoom in a bit so that you see it clearly. Okay. And, and, and you know, uh, it's, it's very simple. You just need to click on this and there's something called ports and endpoints. Okay, this is a new option here. So click on ports and endpoints. It will take you to another tab let me zoom in a bit, zoom out a bit. Okay, it's, it takes you to this particular tab. It's a documentation which will tell you which ports to enable on the firewall and for what purpose. So I'm gonna go in detail and understand, you know, uh, and, and show you. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so that you are able to see it clearly. Zoom in a bit more, yeah, okay. So you see a subheading called Miss Cloud, which means uh, the device needs to, you know, talk to the Miss Cloud. So we need to open these particular ports and URLs. Now, how to read this table is also very important. So any anybody you know who's who's willing to give the admin 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 portal, guest Wi-Fi portal, or or wants to allow webhooks, you need to read this column wise. Okay. So one is the global zero one column, global zero two column, and Europe zero one column. So I'll tell you what these are. Let's say you have an AWS instance, uh, and your your all resides on the AWS instance. Uh, you will you will take the global zero one column. And allow manage.mis.com, uh, you know, slash sign in dot html tcp port 443, uh, api.mis.com tcp port 443, and of course the other others as well. Global 2 is for the GCP instance of, of your org. If your org resides on the GCP instance and not on the AWS instance, then you need to focus on the global 02 column here. Okay. Now, again, if you if your org resides in the Europe instance, then you need to follow the Europe 01 column, the third column. So mostly the customers are running, you know, on AWS uh, US instance. You they basically need to just follow the global 01 and allow all these ports, and you're good to go. Okay. The next table is also important: device to missed cloud communication. So for the devices to talk to the missed cloud, you need to make sure you have on the missed AP uh, or or the missed edge if they want to register to the missed cloud. You need to enable ep terminatornet on TCP 443. Again, for e, for an EX switch to talk, oc hyphen term dot mist sys dot net TCP 2200. And of course, you also have to allow redirect dot, dot juniper dot net ztp dot uh, mist dot com with, with TCP port 443. So you need to allow all these ports and URLs for them to be able to talk to the mist cloud and get registered onto the mist uh, mist dashboard. Again, for AWS, global 01. For GCP, global 02 and for the Europe instance global uh, sorry Europe 01 so you know this is pretty simple I mean what I would suggest is in anybody who's who's about to run a POC or anybody who's about to create a, you know a live network I would suggest you do this beforehand before even this site before even the AP goes to the mist goes to the customers location you take a take 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 a day and you know uh, get permissions to open all these ports and URLs from the customer and so that when you connect an AP onto the network you connect an AP onto the port you connect a switch onto the network you know it takes no time for the AP or the switch to go and and connect to the cloud and get registered so the, the process will become very smooth it takes you I don't know 10 seconds 15 seconds for the APs and the switches to get registered onto the missed dashboard it's a very very convenient way of doing it so rather than uh, bringing the ap uh, into the customer location can, uh, you know putting putting it on the network and then asking for permission from the customer to allow these ports you do this beforehand so that when the ap arrives or the switch arrives 
we are ready uh, for for them to be onboarded onto the Miss dashboard, right? So it makes life easy and makes life very smooth for people running the show on the ground. Okay, so uh, I mean, this is what I wanted to discuss in this particular video. Uh, I'll go back to the Miss dashboard. Guys, anybody who has any questions uh, uh, around onboarding of the AP, feel free to reach out to me in the comments. Uh, the reason why I made this video is because I, I got a lot of questions recently on, on which ports to enable uh, when onboarding a missed AP. So I thought I'll just create a video for everyone's benefit and you know, uh, it'll be helpful for anybody who watches this. So guys, any again, thank you again for watching this and anybody who has any questions, uh, I'm here on the comment section, drop me a message. I'll be able to respond to that as soon as possible. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. You have a wonderful day.